Now, how many of y'all know what a polecat is? Well, if you grew up in the South like I did, you might know of a polecat as another name for a skunk. So today's fly got me wondering how many people know what a polecat is. So I went and asked my teenage daughter, and uh, <laughs> she said, I don't know, a cat that's on a pole? So she'd never heard of the term, but then I go and ask my wife, who did grow up in South Carolina, and her answer was even funnier. She said, I don't know, it's something hillbillies talk about, which I guess is kind of true, and I imagine this is about the only time she's ever heard the term polecat. Yeah, now you take Miss Drysdale. For a time there, she was treating us like we was polecats at a picnic. <laughs> Yesterday, she turned real But nice. here's an interesting fact that I just learned today when researching this fly, that a polecat is actually a critter in Western Europe. It's a mustelid, which is in the same family as a mink or sable or stoat or a ferret. But the European polecat is a little bit stouter and a little bit beefier of an animal. So the story goes that the early settlers in the Eastern U.S., saw a skunk and had no idea what it was called, so they just called it a polecat. And I guess eventually a skunk got the name skunk, but some of the old timers, certainly in the rural pockets of the deep south, they kept calling a skunk a polecat. And I thought that was a pretty interesting fact about today's fly, the panfish polecat, which was created by Jerry Riggins of Florida, but Tom Lentz called this the third fly in his Big Three Brim series. We did one of the other ones a couple of weeks ago. It was called the Gill Getter. If you haven't seen that, I'll link to it at the end of this video. And like the Gill Getter, this one's also pretty simple with very common materials, and you can use any number of color combinations. And I think this one's a pretty cool bug. So there it is in the vise, a panfish pole cat. Pretty nifty little pattern, kind of cool, not hard to tie. A couple of tricks to do it, but I'll show you as we go. And I'm going to tie this on a size 10. This is a two extra long barbless nymph hook. And before I put my thread down, I am going to weight this. I'm going to just put some 015, about the whole length of the, the shaft. Now I'm going to put my thread in and I'm using a black. This is 70 denier. Maybe I should have used a 140, but we can make it work with a 70. So a few brass, put a dam in the back, put a dam in the front, and then we'll take it back to the tail. Now the tail is yellow marabou, but I didn't have any yellow marabou, so let me show you a tip right here. Yellow saddle hackle. Just take some cheap, strong saddle hackle, take one feather, one of the bigger feathers, and at the base, you've got a, a good chunk of this marabou-like feather. So catch this in, and when we're done, you're not really gonna be able to tell that this wasn't a true marabou. Nobody's gonna be looking at your fly box and say, oh my gosh, you tied all those panfish polecats with yellow saddle hackle. Nobody's gonna care. And it's gonna have the, about the same action in the water. So, you know, you adapt and, and adjust as needed when fly tying. So we're good right there. Let's take our thread a little bit up. And the next thing I wanna catch in is some yellow chenille. And this is a medium chenille. This is gonna be the, the underbelly. So I will just, you know, catch it in about right here. It's gonna be fine. But I do want it on the underside, so let's just put a couple wraps here and then try to pull it down underneath and fold it back a little bit. And pinch that a little bit. And then now we've got two strands coming back right here. And you could probably do this with just one but I think it used two according to the picture in the book. Couldn't tell for sure, but I'm going with two and I think it's gonna be just fine. So next thing we're gonna catch in, the black chenille. And this is the one that we're going to wrap all the way around. So we can go ahead and catch this in up here, I guess. Now, before we catch in the legs, put your thread at the middle of the hook and then get some medium round rubber white or you know any color you want and i've got a 10 inch piece right here fold it in half and i'm going to fold it in half again so now i've got kind of four strands and i'm going to lay them each two each on either side of the hook and then just a few medium fairly loose wraps right here and adjust this so they're coming off the sides, maybe a little bit down. See how I've got it right there? And now we can put a few tighter wraps, just try not to move them around too much on you. Now let's take our thread up here where we're gonna finish off the body. And 
we're just gonna wrap this black. Maybe three wraps or so behind those legs, one wrap in between them, and then two or three up front. Okay, well this is being a little bit tricky right here, but we'll get there. Okay, that's two behind, that's gonna be enough. Let's do one right in the middle now, and two or three in front. Okay, and now we're ready, well get them positioned, make sure you're good with them, to flip up that underbody. I'm gonna go ahead and snip these, just make it a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so I like where those legs are coming off. Now, just take your two strands of yellow chenille here, and we're gonna pull it up front and tie it off at the head. Okay, I've got a couple of wraps, got them caught in, and look on the underside. We might need to pull it just a little bit tighter. We don't wanna close that hook gap too much, but you really don't have to worry that much about it because this is a pretty squishy material. Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of cleanup here with that tail, but let's go ahead and work on our head. Just take a thread right back to the eye and then ramp it back up. Okay, when you've got a head nice and big and lumpy enough, go ahead and whip finish it. Now let's take a look, trim the legs. I want the back ones about midway through the tail, down there, maybe, maybe almost as long as the tail, I think, and then the front one's just a little bit shorter than the back. And there we go. Panfish polecat. Drop a head cement and this thing's ready to fish. Now again, don't worry too much if you think you've closed off that hook gap. I think this is pretty squishy. And any fish is gonna take this, you got a good chance of hooking them. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.